Hello. This JC. Um, I'm gonna wait and see if anybody comes in. I don't have any viewers. I'll give them a minute. See if anybody comes in. If not, I'm just gonna start. Gotta fix my glasses first. Okay, well. Oh, yay. Hi. You're my first one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm just going to... Oh, they left. I'm just going to give it a few minutes to see if anybody else comes in. And then I'm going to start because I want to get this done. <sighs> Hello. Welcome to Periscope. I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes to see if anybody else joins. Um, I hope everybody had a good week. I had a great week. The weather here has been amazing. Um, it was about high 70s today and the nights have been right around 60 and after some long hot days it's been great here in Texas. Everybody keeps coming in and leaving but that's okay. Um, I was supposed to go to an event on Saturday and was going to scope it, but they canceled it because we're supposed to have a lot of rain on Saturday. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this in hopes that people will see it. Oh, I was going to turn that off. It didn't go off. People will see it and watch the replay. Oh, yes. Let me get started. My name is Janet Crenshaw. I'm a blogger, a planner addict, a tech geek, and an entrepreneur. I have channels on YouTube and Facebook, and you can get to those probably easier through my website. I just launched my website yesterday, and it is thecreativeowl.org, and that will get you to my other social media. Um, after months of trial and error and research and frustration, I finally got my website launched. And through doing that, I have learned a lot and I'm very proud of it. Um, oh, and you can also get to my Etsy shop through my website. I have a menu choice that says my Etsy shop and that'll get you over there. Um, I wanna do scopes that will help people. And I know I have to build up a viewership first, so you got to get started somewhere. And I'm really glad to ha finally have my website launched because you don't know what I went through to get that done. So today I want to talk about selling on Etsy versus selling on your own website. There are a lot of pros and cons. Um, and a lot of things to take into consideration. I've had an Etsy shop for some time. So when I was building my website and I got to the point of putting my products onto my website, I got really frustrated. Um, my site is built through WordPress, but I bought my theme through a site called Blue Chic. Now it's a great place to go. Their themes are very feminine but they're very beautiful too. And I love my theme. I love the one I picked and the one I'm using a lot. But when I decided to add products to it, I picked WooCommerce to do that. And <laughs> my theme and WooCommerce would not play well together. They did not like each other. So getting my products onto my website was a huge struggle. So after a lot, and it's partly my fault because I didn't research the theme that much. And the theme is for a blog. It's not really designed for e-commerce. So that was my fault. But I did manage to get products on my website, but I didn't like the way it looked. I was not at all happy with the way it looked. So I did a lot more research and I went back and forth about selling my products on my website versus selling them on Etsy. 
Now for me, I finally came to the conclusion that my best choice was to sell through Etsy. The reason being that in order to sell your product successfully, you need a large viewership. I don't have that on my website yet. I just started. I mean, I just launched it yesterday. I was getting a lot of views on Etsy, a lot of favorites. I was a lot of people were favoriting my products and favoriting my shop. Uh, my sales though have been minimal, and again, that's partly my fault because I didn't market like I should. So I don't have a large viewership. Now it may be different for you. Your website may be getting a lot of people looking at it and a lot of traffic. And in that case, it may be better for you to sell your products on your website. But this is something you need to take into consideration and think about. When you sell on Etsy, you do have to consider the fees that they charge. Now, they charge 20 cents for each item when published, and that's for a four-month period. And there's a 3.5% transaction fee on each item sold. Now for me, most of my items on my Etsy shop are printable stickers. So I generally charge $3 per item. So I go ahead and figure the 20 cent charge for each item plus the 3.5, which figures out to under at five cents an item and go ahead and consider it 25 cents for each sale. So I wound up paying two dollars and seven, I mean getting two dollars and seventy five cents for each sale. Now that's not bad at all. Considering my maintenance and the work that I have to do is minimal on Etsy. Some people don't like that. I've heard a lot of people complain and say that Etsy's fees are too high, but that's all a matter of opinion. If you sell on your own website, you don't have to pay those fees, but you do have to maintain your products. So I'm talking kind of fast. So the decision basically comes down to three things. How large is your viewership? Is your website have enough viewers and enough traffic? to warrant selling your products there. Number two, can you maintain and keep up your product listings effectively? That means marketing them, working them, keeping them fresh, keeping them geared towards your viewers that you're trying to sell to. All of that needs to be considered. And number three, how motivated are you to sell? So, how large is your viewership? Do you, like I said, do you have enough traffic coming to your site? Um, is that traffic geared towards the products you're trying to sell? Because when people go on Etsy, they look for specific products. They don't go to your website necessarily to shop, but they do on Etsy shop. So, it boils down again on your site to marketing and working those products across social media effectively. Number two, can you maintain and keep up your product listings? You have to keep them fresh and interesting and get people coming to pay attention to what you're trying to sell. And again, that takes work. There's, there's no magic solution to it. It takes you working to get it there. And number three, how motivated are you to sell? Is this important enough to you to spend that kind of time and effort and sometimes money to sell that product? You may want to do Facebook ads or Instagram ads. It just depends on what you're trying to sell. If it's not a physical product, if it's webinars or consult, you know, doing consulting or that kind of thing, then those avenues may be viable for you. It may mean putting out a little more money if you are that motivated to sell. If you're going to just list, say, 10 items 
on your website and just sit back and see if anybody buys them because you don't necessarily mean them, need the money or you're not that necessarily anxious to sell, then fine, put them on your website and, and see what happens. But if you really want to do this as a living and to support yourself, then you might consider an outside market. Now I know for me, I eventually will be moving products to my website, but that's probably gonna be about six months or more away. But when I do, I wanna suggest this to you. For me, I'm gonna keep some products still on Etsy. This way I can use it to drive that large viewership over to my website. You can go into your About Me on Etsy and create a related link. And you can link that to your website. Now that's my plan. But it's something you might want to take into consideration. Because you have that large viewership base on Etsy and people go there and look for your products and you can drive those people who are interested in what you're trying to sell over to your website to find those products on your website and hopefully to subscribe to it and to give you the opportunity to get emails and other ways to contact these people to do your promotions. And that's another thing. If you have a website that you want to sell items to, be sure and have a subscribe box so that they can go in and enter, depends on which plugin you use or what's on your website, at least their email so that they can subscribe and that way you get a list of email addresses and you can send them notifications. That's one way to build up your viewership on your website. So if you don't already have a subscribe box or plugin on your website, check into it because it's very much worth it. One thing I want to mention is you also need to consider your pricing and listing items on sites such as Etsy. It's very tempting to say, well, they're going to charge me 25 cents to sell this item, so I'm going to up my cost to $3.50 or $4 to make up for that difference. While that's understandable, it may not be your best choice. By all means, when you're going to sell something like that, whether it's on your own site or on an outside site, research, research, research. Go on sites such as Etsy and see what people are charging with comparable items like yours or products. The same goes if you're selling a non-tangible item. Go on online on the internet and find other people selling those things and see what they're charging doesn't necessarily mean down pricing your items, but keep your prices comparable. Because I guarantee you that same person will go say on Etsy, find a set of stickers that they're charging $5 for, and then go over, that they may favorite it, they may mark it, but I guarantee you they'll go over somewhere else in Etsy and look for the same comparable item cheaper. And this gets into another subject that I will probably talk to in the future because I just watched a video on this today and found it very interesting in that it is no longer a seller's market. With the advent of Amazon and online, you know, online sellers and so many companies going online like um, Best Buy and Walmart and any any store now has an online market. So it's become, it's no longer a seller's market. The competition has decreased among sellers. It is now a buyer's market. So when you're selling anything, you need to take that into consideration. You have to make your buyer happy. The power that the seller used to have is greatly decreased. So that's why I say research, research, research. Go in and check out comparable items or products or services and see what other people are charging. Now, I did that. And I found a lot of them, you know, the same price as what I'm charging. 
So that brings another issue. You have to make your product unique enough to get somebody to buy your product versus the repetitive products that are out there on the market. But you do need to price accordingly because overpricing will result in very few or no sales. It means you have to strongly market your item. This should be done across social media. That means work. But it depends on just how successful you want to be. Now, I've done this quite a fa kind of fast, but I really don't want to do long scopes. I know for myself, I, if I try to watch something and it's 45 minutes, I lose interest quickly and I'm going like, get to the point and get over with it. So that's kind of where I am. So what solution would be better for you? And of course, it also depends on what your products are. If they're unique enough and different enough, that does give you a power. It does allow you to charge more for that item because it's different and it's unique. But I guarantee you, if you go in and look, you'll probably find someone else selling the same thing. So that's something else you have to take in consideration. If it's unique and different enough to put on your website and to drive buyers there, by all means do it. But do be aware that you have to work to drive viewers to your market, to your website. Now, there are other markets, like I said before. There are Amazon and eBay and Craigslist and a new one called Crafty. I don't know if you checked it out, but it's handmade items. Um, just check those out and find out what fees they charge. Now, I won't go into that now, but I will talk about that as well in a future scope. For me, it all boils down to having products where the buyers are. And that brings up another thing. If you have your company or your business on Facebook or YouTube or something comparable to that, you need to go out and find other, other people on those, that social media that relates to what you're trying to sell. For me, I'm selling planner items, like planners and organizers. So I go onto Facebook and research what other groups are there that I can join and get in there and get involved in. And then eventually, I wouldn't do it right away. I wouldn't do it immediately. Start offering my products. The same goes with um, YouTube. Go in and research, you know, people who are doing videos on comparable products like what you have. Join them. Comment on them. And that brings up another subject, another thing. Give me a minute. You just need to research it and find like minds with the products that you're trying to sell. And also, if you haven't already begun selling products and you're trying to think of something you can sell and that you can make a living at or that you can make a, be a side, you know, a side hustle or a little extra change, do something that you love. Sell a product that you like, that you think you can get creative at, something that even you would use because I guarantee you if you, for example, sell bubble wrap and you like wrapping paper, it won't be long before you will lose interest. Your efforts will dwindle, your new products will dwindle, and your business will dwindle. That's just common sense. You need to do something that you love to do. Not just for you, but for your business. So take that into consideration. So, the bottom line is fairly simple. How big is your viewership? How much do you want to work? And are you prepared for the work? So there's no magic answer. Um, excuse me, I got to itch my nose. <laughs> I was about to sneeze. There's no magic answer. I wish there was. I wish I could tell you, do this, not that. But everyone's situation is different. You just have to consider... Like I said, the three things, and I'll tell you that one more time. 
how large is your viewership on whatever platform you're trying to sell, particularly if it's your own website. Can you maintain and keep up your product listings effectively, keyword, and how motivated are you to sell? So those are things you may want to think about. Again, my name is Janet Crenshaw. I am a blogger, a planner addict, a tech geek, and an entrepreneur. Check out my website, thecreativeowl.org. That will get you to all my social media as well as my Etsy shop. Check out my blog. I have one on there. And my goal is to do my blogs on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and my Periscopes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, my whole goal with doing this is to share the research and the things I've learned with you and help you sell your products. So I thank you for watching. If you're watching the replay, thank you for watching there. And I hope everyone has a great day. I will be back on Tuesday. Um, I have had no viewers, but I don't care. I did this and I accomplished my goal. So I will be back with you Tuesday and we'll probably, yeah, I'll talk about using social media to sell your products and just how much you really need to work. So I'll see you next week. I hope everyone has a great weekend. If you're going out trick-or-treating or you're going out to a party or to celebrate, please be careful. Stay away from all the ghosties and ghoulies. So have a great day and a great weekend. I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.